this video is going to be mocking a little bit and teaching a little bit, uh, sharing what I see as a high quality man, as opposed to some of the comments I get, which are by low value men who can never ever have me. Okay. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Okay. So, I just wanted to show you guys that <laughs> I'm pretty hot for 62 and I'm under 5'3". I'm petite and fit and pretty fun. So, and I have standards and boundaries, which some of these guys don't like. So, and I'm a mother. I've raised sons. I was married 25 years. I work with men. So, uh, also, if you don't know, I have my bachelor's degree in computer science. I have an MBA. I've built a house. I've started businesses. And I like sex. <laughs> I like discussing the economy, so that's a little bit about me. I consider myself an interesting, passionate, empowered, feminine woman in touch with my masculine energy. And so for me to date someone, I would expect a lot of a man. So what is a high value man? First of all, I would recommend reading the book Mate, which has to do with signs of physical, emotional, and mental health. So. When I read the comments, when I read about guys who are actually sharing their life and contributing to conversation, that's high value. Low value is men who try to create drama or belittle or humiliate people anonymously on the internet. Or even men that try to that get off or women that get off on causing drama or chaos or arguing like even Candace Owens is too much arguing for me people just looking for a reason to find nuances and argue that's just drama and chaos to me that's low value so being calm um, and a high value man when he sees something he doesn't like on a YouTube channel he doesn't leave a nasty comment he simply moves on a high value man knows how to handle a woman Okay, so a low value man is not in charge of his emotions. He has no boundaries. So he's constantly hyperactive and lashing out and impulsive. He has no inner calm on which to go through his life. So a calm man will be like, I'm going to engage with this person. I'm not going to engage with that person. Or if his woman does something that's disrespectful to him, he, he tells her it's not, it's, this is not okay. He doesn't put up with bullshit and he doesn't let himself be used or manipulated. And so a high value man knows how to handle a woman because he can laugh off things that can be laughed off or put her in her place if she's being disrespectful. And such a man is respected. It has nothing to do with his money or his power because a lot of men with power are of low value. They're causing wars, they're causing death and destruction. I consider Biden a powerful, low-value man for sending bombs to Israel to kill all these Palestinians. To me, that's low value. So it doesn't have to do for me with power or status. I would much rather date someone like Max Blumenthal of the Gray Zone. He could be a struggling journalist. I really don't know because he stands for something and he has a conviction and he puts himself on the line professionally to speak of his conviction from the heart. I find him inspiring as opposed to like um, a Dr. Fauci who has a lot more notoriety and respect, but to me is a low value man because he's evil and entitled. So I, uh, on my last video, some people were making fun of me for caring about a man's career. But your career is what you do with your life. It shows where your passion is and where your heart is. And your career should be interesting. Why shouldn't it be? <laughs> uh, a high value man understands that women have standards, preferences, and boundaries. And if he's just some boring guy that he's not going to be wanted, 
he understands and he doesn't want to be boring. A high value man is actually interesting. He's read books, he stands for something, and he has an interesting job. He contributes to something. He's not boring. Low value men are constantly complaining about women who like high value men. And you know, the world is full of a lot of low value men. The video that's pinned to my channel, if you want to see, that video is talking about why 40% of men are not viable mates. They're low value for mating. It doesn't mean you don't have value as a person. It means low value for mating. Like women are just not going to want you. Men want us because they want to fuck us. <laughs> uh, and women are just naturally more selective. We evolved to be more selective. So we expect things of you. And these things that we expect of you, just like in the book Mate, are things that make you a better man. Have a backbone, stand for something, work out, eat well, be emotionally calm and stoic, yet vulnerable, be masculine, stand for something. Stand for your own mental and emotional health, your own personal development, Stand for something in your career. Um, if you just want to be a wheel in a cog, you can get women who, who are fine with that. Um, and of course, as people get older, their standards usually rise. I was just talking to a friend earlier today about how as we get older, we're less willing to deal with bullshit, with boundary violations, and with people who disrespect us. I see as people get older, they're, they've learned that you can't change someone. If someone is disrespectful for you for years and years and years, they're not going to change you better off just not engaging with that because it takes a big toll on ourselves to be around people like that. I didn't realize that until I was in my 50s that I just have to end ties with people who are low value or who violate my boundaries or disrespect me. So... Um, Joe Rogan did say, I heard him and he was chatting with a couple guys. I can't remember who they were, but they were all very successful. And he was, and they were all married. All three of these guys are married and as high value men usually are. And I, con I consider Joe Rogan high value because he tries to be very sincere and authentic. Even though I don't agree with him, everything he does, but he comes from the heart, I believe. And he did say that it's easier to find a good woman than to find a good man. It's really hard to find a good man. And the other two guys agreed. It's easier to find a good woman, woman than to find a good man. And so that's the situation that I find myself in as well. And so a lot of women, the only women that are latching on to low quality men are women who are afraid to be alone like Jennifer Lopez, is afraid to be alone. So she'll latch on to a Ben Affleck who doesn't really like her and who's got a bunch of mental health issues because she'd rather have that than be alone. So when a woman is of high value and values herself and she's not afraid to be alone because she can provide for herself emotionally and financially, She's going to be more choosy and she's going to look for high value and high value not being glitz and glamour, power, status and wealth, but high value being what kind of person are you and what do you stand for and how do you treat people and what are you committed to? Are you committed to um, truth or are you just causing drama? Like every guy that's leaving troll comments on a channel is a low value man. Every woman leaving troll comments on a channel is a low value woman or what we call a Karen. We have a lot of male Karens running around. And, but I would say that most of the men like who leave comments on my channel are high value men. And they're also realizing that, hey, I got my life together. These men, I read your comments. You're saying, I have my life together. I have my friends, I have my work, I have my hobbies. I have my house and I like women, but unless I can meet a woman who also has her life together emotionally and financially and can add to my life, I would rather be alone where it's peaceful. I value my peace. 
And if some woman comes along who's going to destroy my peace, I don't want it. And, you know, there are a lot of low-value women running around, too. They move in with men because they're financially helpless. They don't keep their word. That's another quality of a high-value person. They keep their word. You can count on them. They're accountable. They stand for something. They're honest. And they take care of their physical, mental, and emotional health. And so many people don't. They don't take care of their finances. They don't take care of their kids. They don't take care of their own health. And um, and those people can make our lives worse. I told you guys before, I was talking to someone on the phone the other day, and he started hanging out with this woman, and then she's like, I don't have a place to live. Can I move in with you? I'm, I'm about to be evicted. Can I move in with you? And he didn't want her to. But he said yes. And that was the beginning of the end because she ended up just making his life a living hell. But he didn't say no. He was had no backbone. And he wasn't in touch with his anger and his no, which told him no. People would try to shame you for having a no or having a boundary or being in touch with your anger. There are a lot of really nasty people running around. And so... In order, like, my life is really good because I have not allowed random men into my life. I didn't cheat on my husband. I didn't have affairs. I don't allow random men into my home or into my life. I don't take drugs. Well, I smoke a little weed at night, if you want to know, and I get it from the dispensary. But I only smoke it when I'm in bed at night, not before, not during the daytime. And um, I eat healthy. Like, I take care of myself and... A high quality man also takes care of himself. I'm committed to something like I put my neck out there. I've had very um, unconventional jobs. If you know, if you can look at my LinkedIn, um, I've had some interesting jobs. But I would be open to meeting a man at my level. Now, um, someone left a comment saying that he meets really great women now after 50, women in their 50s and 60s. And there are some really great women in that age group. And I'm sure there's some really great men, but men like that are usually already in a relationship. It's pretty rare to find a guy like Joe Rogan finding himself divorced. That would be pretty rare for someone like Max. Can you imagine Max Blumenthal getting divorced? Can you imagine his wife would ever divorce him? And if she did, he'd be snapped up like that because he's a relationship guy and he likes women. But years ago when I was on Match.com, Oh, you guys want to see my booty? I'll show you. This is all natural, guys. All natural. It's just from working out. All right. Um, back to the show. So I would get on there to try to meet people. And all these guys were some kind of weird losers. Like they didn't have anything really going on. Maybe they were just trying to find themselves again after their divorce. But some of them had big drinking problems and um, emotional health problems. Um, and over the years, um, and you could say the same for me as still being single, but um, over the years as I would go on these sites, it would be the same guys over and over and over. They were always on there. They hadn't met anyone. And a man who's got his life together can find a woman like that. Because men like that get approached by women. A guy who's got his life together can easily find a woman. Easily. But a woman who has her life together cannot easily find a man because 40% of men are not viable mates. They're lacking in what we as women want. We as women are more choosy. Uh, women who have their lives together are more choosy in what they want in a man and a lot of men will just get with the woman because she's hot. I don't really understand how this works, but I do know that men who have their lives together can get a woman like that. They really can. I've even met men in their 70s and 80s when I was an escort, some successful men that were widowers, and the women were chasing them. Uh, and these were not women wanting their money. These women had their own money, their own house, but they liked these men because these were relationship type of men. They had good social skills. They were interesting. That had interesting jobs. They liked women. They liked sex. You know, they were well-dressed. They go to social events. 
you know, and women love guys like that. They can easily get a, get someone. But a woman at that level who has a life together cannot always easily find a man because a lot of men, due to their more higher risk taking and different biological factors, they die at a younger age, they become decrepit at a younger age, they get erectile dysfunction at a younger age, and maybe life is just harder on them. Uh, so I don't know, but um, it's definitely easier for a man to find a good woman than for a woman to find a good man, especially as the years go on. So, um, yeah. And then as far as the widowers, oh my God, um, the video, the widower that, that I'm speaking of, um, that was in his eighties, he still had pictures of his wife all around the house years later. And I was thinking who would want to date that guy with pictures of his wife everywhere. Now, I understand that your wife will always be in your heart. If you're a widow, your wife will always be in your heart. But no woman wants to date a duo. It's like dating a couple. I wouldn't want to date it. It's like being in a polyamorous relationship with a couple because if he is so attached still to his wife that he can't put away her clothes, get rid of her clothes in the closet, and maybe limit it to one photo along with the kids, He's still emotionally invested in that woman. There's nothing wrong with that, but I wouldn't want to compete in that. There's no space for a new relationship. And sometimes it, their men, men may never be able to make a space. Some men can make a space and they can move on, but some men can't make that space. That's the problem with dating a widower. If, his wife, if he hated his wife, it's a lot easier. Um, but then he has to do the personal work to figure out why he was with the woman he hated and what that was all about. So I really think that after people get divorced, it's good for them to be single for a few years, do some personal development work. But, you know, not everyone does that. I will just say that I really go a lot on people's energy, like how they move and how they walk. That catches my attention. And I think that's like a biological thing that gives me an indicator of health. Um, just the way that same way that and, and people try to shame me for being attracted to indicators of health and fitness, but that's the biological part of me. And why would I want to be with some sickly old rundown guy? I don't. I'd rather be alone. So indicators of health is how someone moves and their energy and their muscle structure. And also looking at their faces like years ago, I had a guy who watched my YouTube channel. Um, who worked out a lot, and he sent me some photos of himself, like, uh, flexing, and he thought he was super hot. But the first thing I noticed was his face, which looked, like, very harsh, and there was no sensuality in his face. So I told him, You're, there's no sensuality in your face, and he was shocked because all he could see was his muscles. And he did have a lot of muscles, but to me that was gross because your face shows your sensuality. It shows your strength and your vulnerability and your sensuality. So I want to see that in your face. I want to see that in the movement of your body. So I look for stuff like that, and that's all primal animal spirits. And I'm proud to be in my primal animal spirits. And I still like fucking. I still like sex. I still like getting sweaty when I work out. And honestly, and I know guys are going to be so upset with me, I get the nasty comments that I would rather be alone than be with some guy who doesn't excite me. Excite me with his job, excite me with his ability to handle me, excite me with his ability to be a calm leader in his own life. I mean, the guys that leave nasty comments are just pathetic little, I just flick them off my shoulder. Like, you're just a nuisance now. I want someone who can handle me who just thinks I'm funny and I'm fun and enjoys me. Otherwise, why would I want that? Now, I think that's what guys have to realize. And the men who like women get women. The men who like women are not leaving nasty comments on a YouTube channel because they actually like women. They're not leaving nasty comments. So if you don't like women, you're not going to get women. But there's more to it than that. You have to be... You don't have to look like a supermodel. You don't need six pack abs and you don't need to be rich, but you got to be interesting. You got to have something going on. You have to stand for something else to a woman. You're just dead weight. 
if you're just getting up with no energy or no enthusiasm for your purpose in life, then you're just a dead weight. And I don't want a dead weight just to have some company. Like Ben Affleck would be a dead weight. He just looks so depressed. Like I don't want to carry, be tiptoe around your depressive moods, you know. Uh, be self-sustaining. you got to be a self-sustaining tree. And I'm a self-sustaining tree. And then we can interact from that basis. That's that's what's required so really basic skills are be a person who's accountable to yourself you keep your own word to yourself you say i'm going to get up early tomorrow you don't now you're already out of integrity with yourself so just get in integrity with yourself take care of your physical health your mental health your emotional health and find a way to be self-supporting you do not need to pay for a woman to get a woman interested in you a woman who's interested in you, especially if you're a younger guy, she's not trying to deplete you financially because she wants to build her finances and build your finances. She's out there hustling and saving her money and building for her future. She's not out there using her whole paycheck to buy makeup and fake nails and purses. That's a woman to avoid. So same way to avoid men who got nothing going on. We have to be a lot more selective in who we get together with because the wrong person can ruin your life and ruin you emotionally. And it, it takes many years to recover from having put ourselves in unhealthy environments and unhealthy situations with people who bring us down. So it's really important to be around people who are uplifting, who are inspiring, who are up to something. And to avoid the drama and the low energy of people who are depressing and have nothing going on. And you can't even volunteer with these people because they don't want help. They're just lost in their own neurotic masses, you know. I tried for years on my YouTube channel to help out these guys who were incels and they would just get mad at me. So I, I just realized I don't, I'm not going to try to help people. I'm not going to try to change people. I'm just going to tell you who I am. And if you bring me a lot of drama, I just hide you from my channel. You know, there are a lot of low value men in, in the world and they, they have a phone. They use it, you know, irresponsibly to spread their toxic drama. And women do it too, but they're not, the women are not doing it on my channel. They're doing it on the guys' channels here. I get the men who are angry you know and that's a turn off frankly it's not hot so um i like the men who've got stuff going on and those men and they live in different places they're like they have the same problem you know and people are just as we get older we just get a lot choosier about what we're willing to put up with and what we want and i think that's a good thing i think it's a good thing that people have learned to be happy alone now i have bookkeeping clients so i get a lot of male attention which i don't know these men who are single and not dating i do not know how they get sex that would be a huge problem for me to not have any physical touch any sensual touch that would be a huge problem for me and i don't really care if men are bothered by my bookkeeping because these men are not paying my bills these men are not men I would consider anyway, so it's, 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 um, it's um, irrelevant, actually. But I'm letting you know how I've learned to deal with it, how I learned to get my needs met in the scenario that I'm in, because my only other option would be to marry some guy I'm not attracted to and have him touch me. I don't think so. At least I enjoy the touch that I'm getting. And being a bookkeeper is what works for me. But I know most women would not want to do that. So I think we have to be creative around getting our needs met. And for a lot of people, getting their needs met just has to do with a lot of social interaction or taking trips with their girlfriends or having pets. And I think it's good that humans have evolved to a place where we are no longer needing the tribe for survival in the same way that we can learn to be like to love ourselves more it's kind of a privilege actually and from that place to be like do i really want to be with someone and what kind of person do i want to be with 
and we really need more people to be independent and be like me like a lot of guys are very threatened by me because they're like you're a bookkeeper oh my god i'm it scares them or it repulses them or whatever and that's good because people need to follow their own heart and become free thinkers and outliers more because everyone's trying to be too much like everyone else and that makes them boring. 